Hi, welcome to the Random Hour. I'm Kyle Crump, and I'm joined with Devin of More Sports. Devin froze. Okay, um, and today we have a uh, Jacqueline Trigg, a candidate for hunting and council at large in Indiana. Uh, Jacqueline, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, yeah. I'm Jacqueline. I'm in Indiana. I'm originally from Florida, but I've lived here for since kindergarten. Um, yeah, I'm running for county council. I am uh, the second trans person to ever run in Indiana for anything, uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I was beat out by like two years by Veronica Padrill. Uh, she's running stateside. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a parent, uh, an older sibling, uh, former wrestler, uh, an engineer, and yeah. <laughs> okay. Seven, so, Jacqueline, the first wrestlers. How do I feel about wrestlers? Yeah, last time we had a, a wrestler on the podcast. Oh, bro. Shout out to our good friends at uh, Kraken Pro Wrestling. Unless you're Jay Too Strong. Forget that guy. <laughs> uh, sorry, Jacqueline. Inside joke. We had uh, down here where I'm coaching, we're working with a indie wrestling promotion, and we did an episode on my sports podcast with one of the main event guys, and we just kind of went at it. So it's it's a running joke. <laughs> But uh, the first thing we're going to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, campaign right now? Yeah, so uh, I'm running for county council, and really it's just, uh, it's hard to make county council sound sexy. Um, but I'm an engineer. Um, I'm running against people who are um, working housing or really people who plan to profit off of this job. I don't. I can tell about where I can get my name out there, prove myself, and then run stateside later to push some of the things that I actually kind of believe in that are a bit bigger than just things that I can do with county council. But right now, really, I just want to use uh, what I can to fix roads, to uh, get internet out into our uh, boonies, and, yeah, just do my best to make sure this county stays good. Okay. Um, what is your go-to coffee order? Uh... Cafe Mocha. Ooh, okay. That's a good choice. <laughs> that's like I'm here. We're powered by ca caffeine and ADHD, but that's a good choice. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you this. Kinda. Do you have a uh, local coffee chain that you're a fan of? Or is it all just fast? Or I say like the franchises, coffee houses. Uh, there's three coffee places I like. One of them, Starbucks. I mean, I've been kind of protesting them for a while now, so that sucks. Uh, we've got one that's very local, Columbia City. It's called Bruja. I love that place. They have the best coffee I've ever Bruja. tried. It's just a single store. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then here in Huntington, we have JJ's Coffee, uh, which I go to a lot to meet with other queer people that are local. Mm -hmm. I've been in a group, so meeting people locally at a local coffee joint has been nice. Okay. Turn down. Turn down a little bit. Yeah, no, that's like right now. My go-to right now is uh down here in South Georgia. We have a local branch, uh, like a local one as well. It's called Red Owl. Well, it's technically a small franchise. It's originally out of Valdosta, Georgia, which is about an hour away near the Florida line. But my go-to right now has been this weird, like blue slushy, but it's got like an energy drink in the center, and boy, does it wake you up at two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh. Duncan's got something like that. Last time I had an energy drink, I think my wife almost left me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I could have. <laughs> uh, Devin, are you ready to ask the next question? Oh, it is me. I'm so sorry. So, what has been everybody's favorite TikTok trend lately? I don't know. I'm on Queer Talk. I don't know what straight talk looks like. Um, Mine's mostly just has been hotel songs and um, Chapel Roan. <laughs> I've got a lot of Chapel Roan. I don't, I don't know. So much I, Chapel Roan. Nope, I'm drawing a blank. Has been hotel, yes, I can carry, but I'm drawing a blank. Nope. Mine's got a lot of cosplay right now. Oh, God, mine does too. And streamers. What? A lot of streamers. 
So oh, your okay. wife, you mentioned on your TikTok, was a big manga fan and anime fan. Yeah. Um, ha- has she gotten you into any anime or manga lately? Uh, originally, I think I was the one that got her into anime. Uh, the first thing we did together as a couple was watch all of Fairy Tale, uh, which oh. very, very long, long anime. I think it kept us going uh-huh. years before we had to find something else. Um, Yep. She cosplayed as Maki from um, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen last year at Gen Con. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay, I'm actually looking at my entire box set of Fairy Tale at this current moment. <laughs> yeah, that's my wife's actually favorite. One of my wife's favorite animes, besides Death Note. So it's like we're both big anime fans here. I'm actually <laughs> sometimes when I edit, a good friend of mine gave me his Crunchyroll password. So I'm like, okay, what can I dig into today? Yep. Yeah, we've watched a, we watch a lot of shonen uh, and comedy and. Uh, the funny romance, I don't know what category that would be. Rom coms. <laughs> I'd call it rom com. Um Alright. Yeah, doesn't it's your question. Okay. I'm thinking ahead. Okay. Uh oh. So can you tell us oh god oh, there we go. Can you tell the listeners about your stuff of legend D and D ideas? We have a large D and D fan base as of lately because we've covered so much D and D and shout out all our D and D content creators we've done this year. You need to reword that. I, do I? Yes. Oh gosh, it's the, it's the way I wrote the question. Oh. Wasn't the question. <laughs> no, the the doing people one. Oh. <laughs> I just put myself so, on the spot. budget. <laughs> go ahead Kyle. you know what I done, I done messed up yep. Kyle Lee to save us so on your TikTok you were talking about stuff of legend your D&D I, D idea could you tell us more about that oh um, yeah so that was a novel we picked up while we were at Gen Con and it was this little story about these toys who their uh, uh, owner gets stolen by the boogeyman so they go into the shadows and become real um, and I was considering potentially running a D&D campaign off of that idea where you play as effectively horror version of Toy Story. Um, yeah. You have basically two characters. One of them is the toy, and the other one is the imaginary representation of that toy. So like a teddy bear becoming a werebear or something. Um, okay. I don't know, it sounds That's pretty neat. interesting in my head. Um, I actually have about it, three it does sound interesting. campaigns that I typically run. <laughs> yeah we I'm really big into D&D I've played since I was high school so I've got a lot of D&D people to come on here and we've shot D&D and the funny thing is Devin does not play D&D and so we keep getting D&D people to be like yeah we'll come on and Devin's like great I know nothing about this if you let me I'll go dump about my campaign worlds for like an hour <laughs> But I probably <laughs> nah. Go yeah. ahead, talk talk away. I'm slowly trying to learn. I'm just over here like mage, archer. Don't take a left turn. If it starts in a bar, it's gonna end in a fight. <laughs> most most campaigns actually start in a bar, Devin. Well, most campaigns start in a bar, start to fight. You take a left turn, and you're in a castle, and there's flames, and there's swords, and then. When your wife watches a big Utah, YouTube uh, channel group with their D&D campaign, and one of their character dies, and she calls you at work thinking it's an emergency, but it's not. You want to know? <laughs> that's, an, that's actually something that actually happened like two months ago. Is Lily in here? Huh? No, Lily? Lily's not in here. I actually don't know where Lily is. You lost your dog? I lost the wiener dog, yes. Okay. So, um, transitioning from the lost wiener dog, what are your <laughs> thoughts on the third party system? Third party system? Mm-hmm. Um, I usually run system, I usually run fifth edition, but I've also mm-hmm. I started on 3.5, uh, like a year okay. ago. Um, and before, and I also have played, um, Feng Shui 2, which is just based off of a bunch of cheesy uh, kung fu movies, and it's the best. Um, 
Okay. I've also been running uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. That one came out last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I've got a root system, which is also... And then I have Call of Cthulhu 7 to 7. So, uh, I enjoy multiple systems. Oh, yeah. She, I, I, I've been listening to a podcast that's running the Call of the Cthulhu one, and it's based in the 1950s. And it's, I really like it. it. I think it's Dungeon Daddies is currently doing that. Mm. Um, and then... After the last Airbender, I just finished listening to a podcast on the action pain, and I really enjoyed listening to it. But, all right. Is that when you're ready? Well, update on the lost wiener. Uh, she's underneath the bed right beside me to the far, way behind me in the back. It's like, dude, where'd she go? Ah, stop barking. Picking up on my mic. <laughs> ah, he'll be over. Anyways, uh, where are we at? Okay, yeah, we're on number seven. Jacqueline, besides anime and D and D, is there anything else you nerd out about? I'm, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm really big into just fucking around. Uh, <laughs> <that's awesome. laughs> I come from a family of uh, redneck engineering. Uh, I have a lot of projects out in the garage and i would consider myself an amateur welder that i can weld i wouldn't pay me to weld but i can weld um but i've also got an electric bike out there that i built and i don't necessarily know about the legality in indiana uh on what mm-hmm. i'm allowed to ride that in public but i do <laughs> uh it's it's throttled and it goes about 35 miles an hour it's it's fun okay See, I'm also the same way. My grandfather was an engineer. Uh, hey, will you hit that light switch? Huh? Hit that light switch for me. Thank you. And then want my thing to die by accident. Uh, yeah, I come from a family of engineers. And my grandfather is actually originally from Indianapolis as well, so that's pretty neat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just learning so many new things that I've never... No. Yeah. My grandfather's originally from Indianapolis. And he actually well, my, my grandfather's an engineer too. He built the the Boeing planes. Um but yeah, I favored more towards ecology and stuff. Yeah. And biology. You get your hands in a lot of different things. Um mm-hmm. you'll find engineers say, Oh yeah, I worked on this but yeah, they were one of like a thousand engineers that worked on that. Like I was one of the engineers that worked on Humvees for the military. I was one of the engineers that made the electrical components inside Tesla's because I worked on copper wire machines. <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've been I've dabbled just about everywhere. I've worked for massive car companies. There's a lot of automotive here in Fort Wayne. Uh, so I've mm-hmm. piston rod assemblies. I've worked on Humvees. I've worked on the electric buses that Navistar makes up in Canada. Um, cool. You know, a little bit on everything. <laughs> okay. Lord, you also like said redneck ingenuity. There, there's so much. To, uh, I don't know if you've ever, if you guys have ever visited Georgia, but I feel like almost every county has a lot of engine redneck ingenuity in it. I can't tell you how many quote unquote custom electric bikes I see going down the road. Yeah, they're they're. Fun. I think my grandpa turned a weed whacker into a. Um, Kind of like a go kart. Oh, nice! <laughs> Very lightweight. Oh, that'd be pretty neat. Yeah. A little sketchy looking. God, see, see where I teach at right now. We have an automotive class and an engineering class, and they come together and they let the kids build stuff. Boy, is that fun! Some of the stuff they make is very interesting. Okay. So, speaking of cars, you're on a road trip. What are some songs that you would uh, be on your road trip playlist? Um, can I just pick genres? <laughs> I think that's okay. Yeah. Uh, honestly, a lot of emo punk music. That's that's my favorite. 
anything like, no. kind of indie. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I like. And <laughs> the dredges of society. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I could pick any specific songs. <laughs> I think that's okay. And we, we've interviewed a good bit of people that are emo bands. We've done Felicity. Um, we did Rat Bath, which was a queer gothic punk like band. Um, we did a slasher band. Uh, Devin, am I forgetting them, buddy? Slasher band, Wrath Bath. Uh, Damage, she doesn't do any. Oh, she, not her newer she stuff. She does her newer rap, stuff. but she does a mix of uh, screamo, metal, punk, rap. I do like her music. She, oh, yeah. Oh, you you listen to her. Yeah, I follow her on TikTok, too. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh. We yeah, had she was pretty cool to record with. Me. Yeah, we just yeah. Uh, recorded with her like two weeks ago. She was pretty. <laughs> she... well, you ought to check that episode out. It it was fun to record with her, especially the joke she mm-hmm. said at the beginning. You talking about the Prius? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna say the joke. I'm gonna let her say the joke when people listen to it at home. <laughs> uh, okay. Devin, that's your question. Oh, I'm sorry. It is my question. I'm sorry. So we're big foodies here. And what's the big deal with the nacho cheese on breadsticks? Because to me, I, with my coaching career, I've traveled to the Midwest, a little bit to the north, and down here in the south. Is that like a northern thing? Is that a you thing? And if it is a you thing, what made you think of it? Um, I think it's just an Indiana thing. From my understanding, like I, I actually didn't know that other people didn't do that. You know, it's it's just you know you get uh, you get Papa John's or whatever, and they give you breadsticks or Bosco sticks, and they give you garlic dipping sauce or salsa or or uh, not sauce, pasta, um, pizza sauce or uh, nacho cheese. And nacho cheese is just at every pizza place I've ever been to. <laughs> mm-hmm. hmm. I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah. Other places don't do it. I mean, you get Bosco sticks. You may as well just have cheese on the outside, too. A little bit of spice. <laughs> so I've See, watched yeah. that talk, and I've been trying to figure out what's just a Georgia thing. Because I haven't had any luck guessing uh, what's just a Georgia thing that we have here. Because there's got to be something. You know? We've got tenderloin. No, we're not. Next, we have um, corn casserole. Um Mm-hmm. Oh, corn casserole is good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think if we have any. The only thing, Georgia thing I can think of, which I don't even think is Georgia, is like pot roast. I don't even think that originates from Georgia. I'm thinking peanuts and Coke. I'm th- great. We're known for Coca-Cola and peanuts. Great. Ew. See? See? That's great. You got all these other states like, yeah. That is a normal great. thing. That is a... Baseball game thing, my guy. Hey, listen. When was the last time we went to a baseball game and everybody was eating peanuts and Coke? Last time I went to a baseball game. <laughs> I mean, listen, I can't my... do it anymore because I'm allergic to peanuts now, but I used to do it. I've got to doubt. I tend to avoid Let... any dark pops. Golly. It's like i become such a big foodie. I think... Um, yeah, when I went, well, not baseball, but for the Atlanta United game, uh, which if you ever come to, to Atlanta, go see a game at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The food is extremely cheap, and I got some street tacos for like six bucks. It was great. I feel like uh, in Georgia, the only thing I can think of is uh, decent Mexican food in most places. Yeah, I'm having a hard time thinking of just us things. We got peach ice cream, boiled peanuts and Coke. I don't know. Maybe chicken and dumplings, maybe. I don't know. That could just be a southern thing. No, No, we couldn't create chicken and dumplings. I mean, that's a southern thing, but I don't think that's a Georgia thing. No, I have fried green tomatoes. Redneck. Fried ostrich. A lot of Indiana is expat. And like, 
uh, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee area. I don't necessarily know what foods are only around here. We do have banana pudding. A good one. We got banana pudding. We've actually got banana pudding milkshakes. Mm. Oh, yeah, we do. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I bet the banana pudding... I don't know. When I was in Iowa coaching, the banana pudding I had there was really good. Barbecue, and to me, barbecue is also also pretty big. I like the barbecue in the Midwest when I was at the Midwest coaching. Yeah. Jack, right, it's going to be about I'm a be... year after this interview, and you're going to get an email. We're going to be like, we figured out what food's just in Georgia. <laughs> just in Georgia. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. But speaking of food, I have a follow-up question is, what is the secret to making the good gravy? We really want to know. Um, the gravy that I make, I mean, the only real secret to it is just not in, not pouring out the uh, the grease. Mm -hmm. Add up some toppings, leave the grease in it, add your uh, gravy mix, and that, there, that's easy. That's all it is. <laughs> okay. I've had so many people obsess over that gravy. And they're like, oh, this is the best gravy I've ever had in my life. I'm like, it's the easiest recipe in the world. Yeah. Sausage and a gravy mix with water. Like that. <sighs> I had uh, an entire fraternity. Um, I was making food for them. And they were so obsessed with having homemade food at an event instead of having school food that they were just emptying any containers they had to fill up with my gravy. So, yeah, I gave my gravy to an entire fraternity of men. Yep. They love my gravy. Um, so that's the secret, Kyle. I hope you wrote that down. I think we got it on recording, buddy. <laughs> well, write it down anyways in case you forget. Okay. Um, so having kids, what are some uh, kids' movies or shows that surprised you on how good they were. We are obsessed with Bluey in this household. They they love Bluey, which, to be fair, I love mm -hmm. Bluey too. It's made us cry um, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll turn it on, leave it on in the background. The boys will watch it a little bit, and then they'll get distracted, start playing, and me and Colleen will watch maybe another two episodes. <laughs> I heard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like they say that it's – well, me and my wife, we don't have kids, but our dogs love blue for the colors and shape. So, of course, they know – then they'll watch TV with us. We'll be like uh, – and I'll give you an example. Uh, the first show we noticed they'll watch TV is Aqua Teen Hunger Force on Adult Swim, which is a lot of bright colors. And I was like, okay, cool. What's something else that's bright colors? So we turn on Bluey. Sure enough, they want to watch Blue. It's like, all right, where's for me? <laughs> It'll make you – Yeah, Megan <laughs> – yeah, Megan called me one day and goes, you don't believe what Devin is watching with the dogs. And I was like, is it Bluey? And she goes, how did you know that? Oh, because I'm watching Bluey right now with my <laughs> niece. I've heard that it's a parenting show uh, disguised as a kid's show. How to... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, to be honest, I've tried to get them on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I've just... I That was like uh, something new I've tried. I'm like, all right, guys, let's watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They'll look at me a little bit like, me. We've also watched some it's like, oh. shows. Um, My Life is a Teenage Robot. Um, oh, there we go. Classic. Kinds of things. Anything I grew up on that I trust, you know, I'm okay with them watching. Mm -hmm. Some of the newer stuff, like, oh. I refuse. We're not going to watch Cocomelon. We're not going to watch Baby Shark. None of that. If we watch anything, it's going to be Arthur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anybody remember when Baby Shark took off and it was just like everywhere? Uh, my... See, I grew up on Baby Shark. Maybe this is a Georgia thing. I grew up on Baby Shark and then that Cocomelo version came out and I was like, this is not the version I remember. Nobody died. And everyone looked at me like, excuse me? And I'm like, yeah, the version I was taught in VBS is that everyone dies in the end. And they were like, that is a horrible message. And I was like, it was at a church. I don't know what to tell you, man. Mm. What? That's a new oh. one. No, yes. Arthur. Arthur, I trust. Teaching him everything. Library card. Hold on, what's a good Arthur song? Uh, yeah. Anybody remember the library card song from Arthur? No. <laughs> what? Would you Would you like to sing it for us? 
No, I don't know the lyrics on the top of my head. All I know is, Kyle, you better have your library card. This is back in 2004. Or maybe okay. 98. Okay. Mm. A couple more questions, though. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jack, I'm going back to your, uh, what are some policies that you're big on that you're trying to push for for your campaign? Uh, later on, when I start running stateside, a few of the basic ones, obviously, that everyone wants that for some reason no politicians want, um, legalized weed. I don't know why Indiana doesn't have that yet. It's stupid that we don't have that. Uh, the thing that really got me involved in politics, though, is... Um, the gender affirming care ban that happened for minors here in our state. Um, as soon as mm -hmm. passed, I had, I was talking to a couple of uh, teens that were in the trans community locally, and they were getting fairly suicidal. Um, mm -hmm. To talk to them out of it, uh, it was rough. But really, I kind of put my money where my mouth is and running for office for them. So that that's really one of the biggest things codifying protecting trans rights because indiana's been a republican stronghold for close to 20 years um <laughs> it's it's not the safest place in the world um yeah <laughs> okay and then okay mostly just codifying rights um i, I mm -hmm. know how wishy-washy we are with rights uh and here in indiana yeah. Okay. Well, we've got two more questions for you. Um, this is a very serious question. Uh, who do you think would win in a fight, Bigfoot or the Mothman? Probably the Mothman. Okay. Bigfoot has strength, Told you. But Mothman has aerial combat. So. This is true. <laughs> okay. Hold up, Kyle. What kind of environment are we in? Are we just toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bear? Are we in the woods? This is Bigfoot, not a bear, but I, oh, my I think that's up to her. My brain hurt bear. I was like, moth and a bear. Yeah, that works. I don't know how to help you with that. You've been frozen the entire time we've been doing this interview for me, which I'm hoping Riverside does not fix because you're making a very funny face for me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your screen's been frozen for me the entire interview. Oh, right. It'll fix itself. I'm hoping it does it because it's pretty funny for me. Uh, well, why don't you take a screenshot and post it on Instagram? Maybe later. Actually, don't don't do that. <laughs> why? D don't do that. Uh, maybe next time. Real question: Is Jack right. still here? Yeah, still here. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So last question, where can the people at home find you and your content and your, just you in general? Um, so I'm on Facebook, Jacqueline Trigg for Huntington County Council at Large. Uh, I'm also on Instagram mm -hmm. and TikTok and threads, and that's all under uh, Jackie Uh So J-A-C-Q-U-I-E-D-A-T. Okay. And then we'll have all that in the description so they can find you. Okay. But yeah, Jacqueline, that uh, pretty much wraps all of our questions. I appreciate you coming on. And of course, as always, guys, you can subscribe to, you can also check me out on my podcast, the More Sports Podcast. It's not your typical sports podcast. We try to have fun with it over there. And of course, we got our movie review podcast, Popcorn Buckets, where that's when we really go off the tangent. But we cover any movie from the big-time blockbusters to the local indie one. And as always, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Runner Incorporated, where you can see the audio and video version of this interview. And follow us on social media, Twitter at Runner Incorporated 1, and on Instagram as Rando Boys. And if you really want to see some cringe, come follow me on TikTok at Devin Moore Comedy, where you can see clips of this interview and other cringy stuff that I've made. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Jack, right. you got any last words you'd like to say? Oh, not necessarily, no. Okay.